The semitendinosus is innervated by the sciatic nerve, specifically the tibial division having contributions from nerve roots L5 through S2. Now remember that the sciatic nerve, as it goes beneath the piriformis and coming down here through the thigh, exists as two fused nerves, the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve. They exist together as the sciatic nerve within the sciatic sheath. As the sciatic nerve crosses down to the superior part of the popliteal fossa, it then divides into the corresponding tibial nerve and the separate common fibular nerve. But up here, it's the sciatic nerve, but specifically the tibial division. And it has a very large blood supply. We have the first perforating branch of the deep femoral artery, the medial femoral circumflex artery, inferior gluteal artery, and the inferior medial geniculate artery closer to the knee. Now, because the semitendinosus crosses two joints, the hip superiorly and the knee inferiorly, it has actions at both of those joints. It promotes hip extension and hip internal rotation, and then knee flexion and knee internal rotation. Now these are two separate internal rotations. The hip internal rotation is going to be internal rotation of the femur about the hip joint. Okay. The knee internal rotation is internal rotation of the tibia relative to the femur. And that would occur in open chain. If it's closed chain, it's actually going to be femoral external rotation relative to a static tibia. And it also plays a role in pelvic stabilization. Now out of the two medial hamstring muscles, the semitendinosus is the superior one. So if we peel off that muscle, we expose the underlying deeper semimembranosus right here. So semimembranosus also originates off of the ischial tuberosity, the superolateral region, and then it also crosses the knee joint and attaches on the medial condyle of the tibia, but it is not on the pes inserinus tendon. That is only for semitendinosus, gracilis, and sartorius. So the semimembranosus is innervated also by the sciatic nerve, specifically the tibial division, contributions from nerve roots L5 through S2, and it has a smaller blood supply. It gets blood from perforating branches of the femoral artery and the popliteal artery inferiorly. And its actions are similar to that of semitendinosus. It promotes hip extension and internal rotation, knee flexion and internal rotation, and also plays a role with pelvic stabilization. Now, if you're curious why they have the name semitendinosus and semimembranosus, it's because the nature of their tendons are different whether you're talking about superiorly or proximally and inferiorly or distally. So if you look at semitendinosus distally, where it attaches in the pens and serinus tendon, the tendon is very thin. Okay? If you actually are sitting in your chair right now and you isometrically contract your hamstrings and you feel the medial hamstring tendons, one of them feels very broad and a little bit softer, and one of them is very thin and much tougher or firmer. The firmer one is semitendinosus. But if you look up proximally by the ischial tuberosity, this tendon of semitendinosus is a little bit wider and a little bit softer. In contrast, it's flipped for semimembranosus. Distally, its tendon is a little bit wider and softer and then proximally up by the ischial tuberosity, it's thinner and firmer. And these are named as such because they both have one wider, softer tendon and one thinner, firmer tendon. But they're specifically named for the one distally. Now, there's only one lateral hamstring muscle and it's the biceps femoris, but it has a short and a long head. And there's a few major differences between these two heads. We're first gonna look at the long head. So the long head originates all the way up here on the inferomedial part of the ischial tuberosity and has a little bit of origin on the sacrotuberous ligament, which is not shown here. After crossing the hip joint, it goes inferiorly and crosses the knee joint, but laterally. So it inserts down here on the fibular head, specifically the lateral aspect. Its innervation is the same as that of semitendinosus and semimembranosus. Sciatic nerve, tibial division, nerve root contributions from L5 to S2. 
Its blood supply is via the inferior gluteal artery, the deep femoral artery, specifically the perforating branches, and the popliteal artery more inferiorly. And its actions are very similar, except because it's a lateral muscle, instead of internal rotation at each joint, it's going to promote external rotation. So at the hip, it's going to promote hip extension and external rotation of the femur about the hip. At the knee, it's going to promote knee flexion and knee external rotation, meaning external rotation of the tibia relative to the femur. That would be an open chain. If it's enclosed chain, it's actually going to be internal rotation of the femur relative to the tibia. And again, it's going to promote pelvic stabilization. So that was the long head of biceps femoris. But we also need to consider the short head of biceps femoris, which has some major differences from the other hamstring muscles. The way we're going to think about these two heads is starting down here at the insertion. So both heads of biceps femoris actually both insert on the lateral aspect of the fibular head. Now as we go up proximally, we actually see that it divides into two muscle bellies around right here. The one we just talked about, the long head, its muscle belly goes all the way up to attach on the ischial tuberosity. That's its origin. But there's another head that comes off of here that doesn't go up as far, and it kind of terminates about right here. It's a little bit deep to the long head. You can't really see it. There's a little bit of it exposed on the outside here. That is the short head. It originates off of the lateral lip of the linea aspera of the femur. And it also has a little bit of origin on the lateral supracondylar line, which is more inferior down here. Again, you can't see that. So the short head doesn't go up to the pelvis. It stays down here on the linea aspera of the femur. So it doesn't cross the hip joint. Therefore, the short head of biceps femoris cannot extend at the hips. Its only action is at the knee joint. And it's going to be a knee flexor and external rotator of the knee, meaning in open chain, it's going to promote tibial external rotation relative to the femur. In closed chain, that would be femoral internal rotation relative to a static tibia. The blood supply is via the deep femoral artery, specifically perforating branches, and then also the popliteal artery. So one major difference between the short head of biceps femoris and the other hamstring muscles is that it doesn't have any actions at the hip. It only has actions at the knee, and therefore it cannot promote pelvic stabilization. The other major difference has to do with its innervation. It's still innervated by the sciatic nerve. However, unlike the other hamstrings, it's not the tibial division. It's actually the common fibular division of the sciatic nerve. However, making learning a little bit easier, the nerve root contributions are still the same, L5 through S2, for the short head of biceps femoris. So the three muscles that we just talked about, the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and the biceps femoris, those are the three true anatomic hamstring muscles. However, there's another one that is not a true anatomic hamstring, but it functions as a hamstring. So we would say that the hamstring part of the adductor magnus is a functional hamstring muscle. Now this is not in the posterior compartment of the thigh. It belongs with the other adductor muscles, which are in the medial compartment of the thigh. And to really understand this muscle, we're actually going to go to the next slide. These are both posterior views of the adductor magnus, but I want to take a look at this one on the right because it's nicely color-coded. So all of this is adductor magnus, and of course the hamstrings have been removed, so you can see this muscle. Now there's two components to it. Let's knock this one out first. This one in purple over here is the adductor part of the adductor magnus. So this one actually functions as an adductor. Okay? It's also termed the pubofemoral portion or the diagonal portion because if you look at the fibers, overall they're running diagonally. Okay? This is the adductor component. The one that we care about here is this one that's colored red. This is the hamstring part. It's also called the ischiocondylar part or the vertical part or vertical fibers because the fibers run vertically. Now its origin is up here on the ischial tuberosity. Its insertion is down here on the adductor tubercle of the femur. Now you'll notice here that this muscle does not cross the knee joint. 
So it only has functions at the hip. So when we say it functions as a hamstring, it's not functioning as a knee flexor. It's only going to be functioning as a hip extensor. And it can also internally rotate the femur at the hip. So not a knee flexor, it's only a hip extensor. And that's why we say it has a hamstring type function. And because it crosses the hip joint, it can play a role in pelvic stabilization. Its blood supply is via the deep femoral artery, the femoral artery proper, the popliteal artery, and the genicular artery. Now the innervation of adductor magnus as a whole is split. The pubofemoral portion over here, which is the adductor part, this is innervated by the obturator nerve. We don't care about that right now. What we care about is the hamstring part, this ischiocondylar part. This part is specifically innervated by the sciatic nerve, specifically the tibial division, which is the same as the actual hamstring muscles. However, instead of getting nerve root contributions from the L5 to S2 nerve root range, the adductor magnus hamstring part only gets nerve root contributions from the L4 level. And to conclude this video, this is a nice little picture that shows the innervation of the hamstrings via the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve emerges from beneath the piriformis muscle right here, one of our hip external rotators. And the green part here is the tibial component. The yellow part is the common fibula or common peroneal component. Right? And they're fused together initially, contained within that sciatic sheath. And collectively, they're called the sciatic nerve. You can see here that the tibial component gives off motor branches to the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, the long head of biceps femoris, and you can also see the hamstring part of adductor magnus. Even though it's not a true anatomic hamstring muscle, it's a functional hamstring muscle. And then remember that the oddball of the innervation is the short head of biceps femoris, which receives motor branches from the common fibular part of the sciatic nerve. And then just remember, as that sciatic nerve traverses inferiorly, eventually it hits that superior part of the popliteal fossa, where then the sciatic sheath terminates, and the two components separate into individual independent nerves. This would be the tibial nerve, and this would be the common fibular nerve, which, as it branches around the fibular head, then divides into the superficial and deep fibular nerves. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.